Hello everyone, welcome. Um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, services on top of Google App Engine. Uh, just first, let me ask you just a question. Who has already deployed an application on uh, App Engine? Anyone? No, nobody's on in this room about APIs. Just one person. Is it in production? No. Okay. Well, good. So now I, I know a little bit more about about you. Let me introduce myself. I am. A, oops. I pause. I am Aurélien Pelletier, uh, CTO of Sphere, to on uh, Twitter. Uh, Sphere is a consulting company. We mostly work uh, with uh, Java, C Sharp, uh, JavaScript, and HTML5. And um, this talk will be, it's, it's a feedback on uh, one of our projects that's uh, it's going on right now. Um, this project, it, it's for a large company. Um, is they already using uh, Google Apps for business, and they wanted to use the Google Cloud Platform. Uh, to be able to build not just one application, uh, but many applications to answer business needs with specific developments. So they ask us to, uh, to build a, what we call a service-oriented architecture um, on the Google Cloud Platform. To do this, uh, you, you don't start from scratch. There's a lot of, uh, of implicits, there's a lot of references. I will go quickly over this. Um, since you're attending API days, I uh, assume that you know a lot of this. If you don't, uh, it's, you see there's a, uh, I gave you the, um, you can check the slide after, there's all the links online, so you can check those references uh, later. Um, so we want to build a service-oriented architecture on top of a cloud platform. Well, first, we better know about uh, what is cloud computing, the cloud. So that's a big, big buzzword. And uh, anyone is doing cloud computing today, and anyone has a different definition. Uh, usually, I, I like to refer to uh, the NIST definition. Uh, they have a paper, it's like a five-page uh, five PDF. It's, it's very clear, it's uh, precise, and uh, that's the definition I usually, the academic definition I usually refers to. Uh, so we, we are talking about the same thing, and not uh, an, uh, another vendor offer or whatever. Um, but that's uh, five characteristics, service models, deployment mode, it's a bit complex. So usually what I just say about cloud computing, it's uh, the information technology by the web giants. Uh, the Google, the Amazon, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, they face problems they could not solve with traditional IT. Uh, so they had to reinvent everything from scratch, uh, almost. And, uh, and today, uh, it's, it's what they did works so well that they can uh, give it to, uh, to you, to us, as a service. And that's what, we call cloud, that's what I call cloud computing. Um, so as I say, cloud computing, it's IT by the, the web players. Uh, so you also better know about the web, uh, the web architecture. And uh, the good thing is um, there's a document on the W3C uh, website uh, called Architecture of the World Wide Web. Volume one, anyone knows about this document? Anyone who has read it? Uh, well, if you're doing web development, right, just start here. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a web, but the guy who, who are doing the specification of the web. Uh, it's volume one, don't look for a volume, volume two, it does not exist yet. Uh, this document is 10 years old, so I'm waiting for someone to write uh, volume two. Um, and the nice things about the web, it's, it's the biggest uh, distributed uh, system working. And uh, does anyone know about world feeding thesis about REST and distributed system? Does anyone there? Yeah. Uh, so world feeding is a guy who work on uh, HTTP specification. And in 2000, he did a, uh, a thesis on distributed system. And in this thesis, in chapters five, he explains why the web works. What are the constraints and properties of the web that make it works? And uh, it's called uh, REST. And uh, who is doing uh, RESTful API? There, you, okay. So that's, that's where it comes from, the term REST. So if you're doing RESTful API, uh, you better know this stuff. Or you, maybe you're missing some stuff. That's an academic work. Uh, so there's more, you have to be pragmatic and uh, you don't have to follow everything. Uh, but that's a very important reference. Uh, other good reference uh, that you, you should read, uh, Design a Good API, API on Why It Matters by Joshua Brush. It's not about web API, it's more about library API, but still uh, fundamental information there. Uh, Altasians, the guys behind uh, Confluence and Jira, uh, have a pr some pretty good uh, guidelines. It's a good start uh, when you want to design an API. 
And uh, last but not least, uh, RESTful Web API, uh, the book, I believe uh, Mike uh, Edmondson is, uh, is at the conference. Uh, it's the sec second edition. There was a book uh, like seven years uh, ago about RESTful uh, Web um, Service. It was the name at the time. Uh, great stuff. It, it's everything there. You, you must read this if you are designing, building a web API. Um, so uh, my talk was uh, named Service-Oriented Architecture. Uh, so when you, you hear the SOA, it, it was the big buzzword before the cloud computing, and it was uh, very often associated with web services, uh, web services like SOAP, Wizder, UDDI, and uh, well, if, if the guy who, who did SOAP and Wizder had read all the references I just gave you, they would never add uh, implemented SOAP. Uh, so when I'm talking about service-oriented architecture, I'm not about talking about web service. Uh, I'm talking about simple and pragmatic stuff. So today it means you just start with uh, JSON plus HTTP. And that's, uh, that's easy. Um, but uh, service oriented to, I've seen many um, SOI initiatives fail in the enterprise, uh, but it was not because of technical problem. Uh, there were some technical issues, interoperabilities and stuff, but that's not the main, the main issue. Uh, issue was more problem about uh, organization. So there's Three simple rules if you want to make your uh, SOR works in an organization, and you have to, to uh, apply these rules to the whole organization. First, all your application must expose the data and functionalities through a service interface. Second, all application must use this interface, communicate with each other through this uh, interface. Third, there's no other way to communicate. Uh, and uh, I, I've, I did not invent the, uh, those, uh, those rules. Uh, Jeff Bezos did CEO of Amazon in 2002, and uh, 10 years later, uh, we know where Amazon is uh, talking about web services. Uh, so that, those are pretty, pretty good uh, rules. And there's uh, uh, one additional rule uh, he gave in his, in his memo, internal memo. It was this one. Uh, anyone who don't, doesn't do this will be fired. Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, that's how Amazon is, is where they are today. Uh, so I think it's, it's pretty interesting to, uh, to have this, those words in mind uh, if you want to create a service-oriented architecture. Okay, um, that's enough for the introduction. I hope it wasn't too fast or too slow. Um, now let's talk about uh, the Google Cloud Platform, and uh, I will focus on um, App Engine. Uh, Google Cloud Platform is huge. There's uh, like a compute engine that uh, just went uh, generally available uh, yesterday. Uh, you, you should try it. Its performance uh, are just amazing, and just uh, very interesting. Um, there's one thing that's not in the, the cloud platform of Google, but still from Google. I, I, I want to put it in because it's uh, very powerful. It's called AppScript. Um, it's uh, with AppScript. You can use JavaScript to automate, automate tasks on, uh, on top of your Google documents, and it's very powerful, and you can do a lot of stuff. So I really like, I, I don't know why it's not in the cloud platform. It should. Um, but I'm going to focus on Google App Engine. Uh, we'll talk about a few, few subjects. That's uh, mostly it's uh, some feedbacks and tips and tricks uh, from what we've learned uh, working on top of uh, App Engine. Um, so let's start with, uh, we, you want to do, we wanted to do a service-oriented architecture. Uh, it's uh, for a corporate world, so security, it's, it's a big thing. And uh, if you want security, you want to communicate over HTTPS, uh, always. And you want to force the access always to be uh, in HTTPS. And Google App Engine, what you do is uh, for um, the App Engine, you can uh, develop in Java, Python, Go, or PHP. There's a configuration file. Uh, depending on your language, it, it, it can change, but the, the main one is uh, app YAML uh, configuration file, where you define the name of your application, the version, the runtime. And then uh, you can have some configuration. If you want to redirect, to force your user to always use HTTPS, you just put those three lines in the configuration file. That's just it, it's done. You don't have to, uh, to modify your Apache, Apache configuration file. Just there, everything uh, is there. Uh, you also want to authenticate your users. Uh, so you just had this uh, with those two lines. Uh, everything behind secure uh, requires a login. And the login is done by uh, Google SSO. Uh, that can be your Gmail account. It can be OpenID stuff, uh, or it can be your own uh, SSO system if you're, you're using uh, Google uh, for business and you have a, a, a business account. Uh, that's for authentication. 
uh, you also want some uh, maybe a little bit of authorization. Uh, we always have a requirement. So yeah, I need this super administrator account uh, to do uh, the special stuff. Uh, that's always uh, puts a mess in your, in your application. Um, here you just, uh, if, if you don't have to manage authorization for other stuff, but if you just want to have admin account, it's, it's a lot of work, not for much. On App Engine, you can just change the login required to login admin, and uh, the everything behind slash admin will only be accessible by people you have registered in the Google App Engine console. There's a, a console behind the, your App Engine application, and you put users um, in this console. Uh, that's just the email, and you can restrict uh, access. Okay, so that, that's uh, very useful, very nice to create uh, web applications, but um, unfortunately, you can't really use it for uh, uh, cross-application web API calls, because all the authentication stuff, it's designed uh, for user authentication. You have a form, it's HTTP redirect, cookies, even two-factor authentication, so uh, you need someone behind the, the keyboard to authenticate yourself. You can't authenticate uh, with your, your web service. So how you do, you do, you do authentication between uh, application and uh, App Engine? Uh, first, uh, let, let's see how you call Google APIs, what Google does. There's many mechanisms. It, it's a bit of a mess, but today it's converging toward OHOT 2. And uh, on App Engine, we will see you have this app identity service that's very useful and makes things much easier. Uh, what is app ident identity uh, service? When you create an application on App Engine, um, your application gets an identity, and its identity, it's a, an email, just like your email. So what you can do with this email, you go to your Google spreadsheet or any Google document, and you share the document uh, with the application, just like you would do it with uh, a human. Once you've done that, uh, you can code some stuff. Oh, that might be a bit, a bit scary there. Um, but uh, here, that's just this code, what it does, um, let's see. We call the app identity service. Uh, we get an access token because beyond this, it's uh, OHOT2. And um, with this token, we create credential to access the service. Here we create a spreadsheet service, pass it the credential. Um, there, this is the URL to read all the spreadsheets that the, the user has access to. On your application, you just give him access to one document or two, but not much document. And then you can get feeds entries, you get all the spreadsheets the user has access to, uh, the application. Uh, we use this um, to put configuration, configuration information for the application, and also reference data. Uh, usually, you, you very often you have a reference data, it's uh, you know, like the list of countries, or the, the list of status code, or whatever, it's not much data. And uh, with uh, Google Spreadsheets, you get a user, a crude user interface for free, very, uh, everyone knows how to use it, uh, you don't have to code it. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, oh yeah, I, I talked about uh, earlier, I talked about Google Apps Script, and uh, that's just the only example I give you about Apps Scripts, and just to show you how powerful it is. Uh, if you want to take the content of the Google Spreadsheets and expose it as a JSON content, uh, all you have to do is those uh, five lines of code uh, in JavaScript and the Google Apps Script. Um, that's, uh, and that's really, that the fastest way I know to expose uh, a JSON content on the internet. Well, you get an ugly URL, but still you, you get your, your content. And it's managed security and a, a bunch of stuff. Uh, now, let's talk how you, we're going to secure our call between uh, uh, our app, Google app uh, applications. There's uh, several options. Um, so as I said before, Google is pushing very strongly uh, OHOT. Um, so that's, and the first line, uh, OHOT service provider, that's uh, pretty new on uh, App Engine. Um, any application on App Engine can be an OHOT service provider. You implement the service part, server parts, and that's pretty hard to do, actually. I, I've, I've tried it before, just, just don't try it. Let Google do it. Um, that's pretty new. I haven't tested it yet on, the, on Google App Engine. There's not much documentation. Uh, so well, we'll see how, how, what we can do on this. But if you need to be a service provider, probably the fastest way it, it's this one on any platform. Uh, an OOT service provider. Uh, and even faster than this, we, we talk a bit about Google Cloud endpoints that's package all this uh, more easy. Uh, again, we'll talk about the app identity service. It's not only an email, but it's also a public-private uh, key pair uh, for authentication and signing. And 
Okay, you were just doing HTTP, so there's many other options uh, we'll check. Uh, if you want to go the OOTS uh, way, uh, you have to go through what's called the OOTS dance. Uh, OOTS, it's, uh, you have to do a lot of redirects between the client, the provider, the consumer. Uh, so it's not very um, developer friendly. And user friendly, things are getting better, but it it's still uh, can be pretty hard to implement. Um, so Google takes care of all the server part for you, but you still have to do the client part, and it's, really, it's not easy. Um, so that's why they created Google Cloud Endpoints. Um, it's more uh, targeted towards um, mobile application. Uh, the, the really powerful stuff in, uh, in Google Cloud Endpoints. It's, it's going to uh, take the identity of your user on the phone. I'm logged in on my phone with uh, my uh, Gmail account. And we'll relay this identity all the way to the back end. So I, I just, uh, and it's, it's pretty, pretty easy. It packaged OHOT to supports and uh, we create for you a client code for iOS, uh, Java, and Android, uh, JavaScript code for your web application. Um, with, uh, how do you use a Google Cloud Endpoint? You just put annotations on your code, and then uh, you have to build your application, and it's going to generate some server-side code and some client code you can reuse. I'm not a big fan of this code generation for service call. Uh, that's what uh, we, we were doing with uh, Wizdor. And it, it can break. I mean, it's, I'm not a big fan, but still, that's a, a fast way to uh, implement OHOT uh, on top of uh, App Engine, and you don't have to, uh, to worry about client code. So that's cool. Um, one thing I discovered in Google App Engine, it's, it's buried in the documentation, very, very, very deep in the Google documentation. And that it's crazy, because I believe that's a very, very powerful stuff. Uh, App Engine identity is not only an email, it's also a public-private keeper. And that's, uh, uh, this, that's cryptographic stuff, that's how you do security, basically. Uh, if you want to log in uh, on a server with SSH, that's what you use. Uh, HTTPS works thanks to this. All the security basically works uh, thanks to this, so that's very strong. Uh, you can implement very strong authentication uh, on this. Um, uh, we just have five minutes left, do you want me to go into the details. Uh, just raise your hand if you want. Uh, if you want me to go into the details about signing contents, filtering, uh, validating the contents, and public key that stuff. Just raise your hand. Yes, one person, two, three. Uh, raise your hand if you don't want to <laughs> me to talk about all that stuff in details. <laughs> uh, okay, that's even. So uh, I keep going. <laughs> uh, so first, you have to sign the content. Um, yeah, you, you don't have an app engine, you don't have access to the private key. All you have access to is a method to sign the content with the key. Uh, so that's just those three lines of code. You sign uh, your, the request you're making. And you send to the provider the request with the signature. Uh, you expose your public key. That's the code to expose the public key in JSON format. Uh, and then on the uh, provider side, you have to check uh, the signature. And here, you have to do it yourself. That's cryptographic stuff. Uh, so you better uh, get some sample code, otherwise you're going to do it wrong, and uh, just, uh, you just uh, verify that the signature is right. Uh, but uh, it's very, that's most uh, secure authentication you, you can get, I believe. Um, and other mechanism, uh, in the end, what we did, we did not implement any of the stuff I've just showed you. Maybe we, we'll go the public private key pair later. But uh, just uh, back, back to basic, uh, so HTTP basic over HTTPS, uh, it's standard, it's very simple, you get code in every language available to do this. Just that's the simplest way to implement security. Uh, the only thing, you have to manage a search secret, so that's, that's why there's a, a point of failure in, the, in you, might be an, an issue about security. Um, about update and deployment, uh, that's a, a big part when you're doing uh, web services, how do you, you, you deploy your application and update it? Once you deploy the application, it, it just can't stop, I mean, if you have many clients using it. Um, so we have a software factory, standard stuff on, on the cloud again, we use GitHub for the source code, we have CloudBiz, it's a Jenkins as a service uh, to read the GitHub code, build the application, and push it to Google App Engine. All this is it's very easy, it's integrated very well on, on, on CloudBeast. And uh, when you deploy, you want to manage version, uh, and that's a very powerful feature of Google App Engine. Uh, you can deploy up to 10 versions concurrently, 
10 version of your application. When you deploy, you say, I want to deploy Appear Sandbox version one, version two, and uh, you, you get different version. The default version is there. You can access this on the standard URL. And if you put, uh, uh, if you want to access the other version, you just add this to the URL. And you have the different version running concurrently. You can test your new version. If it's okay, you just switch to the, uh, the default version. Um, there's a small trick that uh, took us a few days to solve. Uh, if you're doing HTTPS, uh, the certif Google certificate doesn't work with uh, sub subdomains, uh, so you have to replace the dot with dash dot dash. It's just uh, it's buried somewhere in the documentation again, uh, but that's, uh, it works. Uh, another very nice thing about uh, this uh, versioning stuff on Google App Engine is uh, traffic splitting. Uh, you can say 50% of my user will go to version one, 50% to version two, so that's uh, very nice to do A-B testing. Why not, maybe not for your web API, but for your user interface, that's pretty cool. Uh, versioning, and one last thing, uh, I'll talk about uh, monitoring. Uh, if you're deploying a, a service-oriented architecture with many services that call each other, uh, at one time you need to know what's going on and debug and um, check the logs. Um, so every app engine has its own slugs. Uh, you can configure how much slugs you want to keep. You get uh, uh, error code, duration of the, uh, the request, all that stuff. Uh, but it's not easy to debug many applications um, that are talking uh, to each other. So what you can implement, uh, we, we did not implement this yet, uh, but should be, should be, it's uh, pretty promising. Uh, what you can do is you, you you make a cron to get all the logs from all your application. You store them for long-term storage on cloud storage, uh, Google service. Then you export this to Google BigQuery. And with BigQuery, you can query your logs in real time. Uh, and that's quite uh, pretty amazing stuff. There's an open source project called uh, Mage by people from a company called Strike on GitHub. And uh, we're looking into, uh, into this. Uh, well, I believe uh, that's all. Thank you. Any, any question? So, any question? Who uses Google App Engine here? Only one, okay. Two, two people? Did you deploy an SOA architecture on it? Not yet. I, I have a question about, um, sure. mm, about App Script mainly. Apps. So, app scripts. Yes. Yeah, about app scripts. So, uh, what is for you the, the value of app script? Uh, so, app script enable uh, in, in with the JavaScript interface to script any services. But what is yeah. the, the business value uh, yeah. of it? Uh, it's it's not much for a web API. Uh, app script. It's like a VB for Microsoft Office. You can automate a lot of uh, of um, administrative tasks. You can implement simple workflow, send emails, update calendars. Uh, stuff like this uh, at Sphere. Uh, we are managing our uh, um, uh, vacation request. Thanks to this, uh, we implemented uh, the workflow in two days uh, to uh, get the request, uh, get the validation, uh, update a calendar with the uh, vacation of everyone. Uh, so that this kind of stuff you can you can do on app scripts. It's, on, it's only with Google service now, or you can use external ones? Yeah, you can use it with your personal account. Uh, I do a live coding demo, it's in like 10 minutes, I implement a, a, a formula uh, with a upload of an image and generate a PDF and send it by email uh, to someone. It's, it's 10 minutes live coding to, to get this done. Uh, but pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> we have time for one last question. Yeah, App Engine user. Hi, uh, so my, my name is Nishant. Um, I work for a company called January. Um, we are user management platform. So I, I use this uh, app, um, app for building a webhook event that yeah. would notify uh, the end, end point and uh, basically the, to the Google who was showing everything. My question is a general question. Which enterprise level clients, do you have an example of enterprise level clients or enterprise level applications using this so that people can think, okay, we should use Google. Do you have any examples? Okay. Uh, somebody has used the, the client I'm talking about here. Um, they signed a contract. I don't have the number. It's a contract they signed with uh, Google. Uh, but for end users, for the, the production part, for the run of the application, it's open bar. Any, anyone in the company can say, 
I want to build an application, so they have to get a budget to create the application, but they don't have to worry about the cost to run the application. It, it's, it's, so, it's so small, it's, it's a, a forfait, what, I don't know the word in, <laughs> in English. Uh, that's, uh, they, don't, they don't have to worry about the run, running cost. Uh, 